Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at some of the inspections that can be conducted on a starter motor armature. For this particular inspection, we are going to require a multimeter and a Werner caliper in order to measure the diameter of the commutator segments. Now let's proceed to some of the tests that can be performed by using a multimeter and a Werner caliper. Well, the first thing that we can perform on a starter motor armature is an inspection of the commutator for open circuit. These are the commutator segments, and as you know, the construction of a commutator segment, they are all interconnected. There are two wires coming to each commutator segment, and the entire commutator segments are interconnected. So, the first thing that we can inspect is by using an ohmmeter, check if there is continuity between every segment of the commutator. If there is no continuity between any segments, then the armature either needs to be replaced or it has to be repaired. Now, in order to do an inspection of continuity between the commutator segments, select this range. You can put it on a beep. You can put it on beep so that it can show you continuity. And then connect it to every commutator segment. So this is how the test is done. We have continuity, continuity, this is how you text continuity of the commutator segments. As I have told you already, all the commutator segments, they need to be continuous, they need to show continuity. And if you are interested, you can also have a look at the resistance value of H. If you want to assess the resistance value of H, if, if you want to see if there is any difference between the commutator segments, you can also measure between A, the neighboring. For example, this right here, we have 1.5 ohm. Neighboring ones, 1.5. 1.5. One point two. So by doing so, you can inspect continuity between every commutator segment. If you see a very significant variation, either the commutator segments need cleaning, or something is wrong with the armature assembly itself. So this is the first inspection, inspecting the commutator circuit for an open circuit. So this is the first test that you can perform on the commutator. The other test that can be done on this armature is an inspection of the commutator for ground. These commutator segments, they need to have continuity among, them, among themselves. They need each have continuity, but it should be insulated from the body or from the armature iron core. So the other test is an inspect commutator for ground. In order to do that, using an ohmmeter again, we are going to check continuity between the commutator segments and the iron core. There should be no continuity. You place one multimeter lead on the iron core and place the other on the armature. As you can see, there is no continuity. There is no beeping, which indicates that this is not grounded. So the commutator, it has to be insulated from the body. It should not be continue. There should be no continuity with the armature shaft or there should be no continuity with the iron core. So this is commutator test for ground. The other test that can be performed on the commutator is if there are any dirt or if there is irregularity, you can check by using a DL indicator. So all you have to do is place this on a V block. If there is a problem with the commutator irregularity, that can be inspected by using a DL indicator. So place the armature on a V block using a DL gauge measure the circle run out of the armature. By rotating the armature, we are going to measure the maximum run out of the armature. There are specifications provided regarding the maximum commutator circle run out, so the surface can be inspected by using a DL indicator and a V-block. For example, for this particular armature, the maximum circle run out is 0.05 millimeter or 0.002 inch. If the circle runout is greater than the maximum value, 
it has to be corrected on a laser machine. So you mount this on a laser machine and then you resurface the commutator segment so that the irregularity can be rectified. The third inspection that can be done on a commutator is inspecting the commutator for any dirt or burn surface. This requires a visual inspection. By visually inspecting the commutator segment, you can see if there is dirt or burn on the commutator segment. If there are some irregular parts that are minor, that can be corrected by sandpaper. Very fine sandpaper can be used in order to rectify if there are any dirty or if there are burned components of the commutator that are not that much deep. So fine sandpaper, for example, number 400 grit sandpaper, can be used in order to correct dirty or burned surfaces of the commutator segment. However, if the irregularity is very large, that has to be corrected by turning it on a lathe. So there are two things that require turning the commutator segment on a lathe. One is if the commutator circle runout is beyond the specification. The other is if the commutator is dirty or if it is burned to a greater depth. So these are the four inspections. The other inspection that can be performed on this armature commutator is an inspection of the commutator diameter. Using a Werner caliper, measure the diameter of the armature commutator. Then the commutator diameter will be measured by using a Werner caliper. Just measure the diameter of the commutator and then compare it to the specification. You can compare it to the specification for every particular armature commutator. There is a designated standard value and minimum diameter value that can be referred from the service manual of the specific armature. And then by using a Werner caliper, measure the commutator diameter. If the diameter is less than the minimum, then the armature needs to be replaced. So this is another inspection that can be done on the commutator. The other final inspection that we are going to see today is the depth, an inspection of the undercut depth. The undercut depths of the commutator segment, it has to be checked. Check that the undercut depth is clean and that it is free from foreign material. It has to be smooth throughout the commutator segment. It has to be smooth and the edges, they have to be very smooth. Standard Undercut depths will be provided on service manuals. For example, on some commutators, 0.6 mm is the standard undercut depth of the commutator segments. The depths, so there is a minimum undercut depth that is also provided. For example, on some manuals, there are 0.2 mm undercut depth minimum value that is provided. If the undercut depth is less than the minimum value, it can be corrected by using a hacksaw blade. If, there are, if the undercut is still dirty again, that can be corrected by using a hacksaw blade. By using a hacksaw blade, the undercut depths can be rectified. For example, this is a broken piece of a hacksaw blade. By using this, you can clean the undercut in such a fashion. So every undercut, it has to be clean it has to be deep enough. When the starter motor is spinning, the carbon brush has some materials that can be deposited in the undercut that has to be cleaned. Otherwise, if the undercut is not clean, those foreign particles can cause continuity between these commuta neighboring commutator segments. The neighboring commutator segments should be continuous only through this circuit, only through the coil winding. Otherwise, if dirt and dust is accumulated in here, especially if there are dirt particles that are accumulated here from the carbon brush, that will cause a short circuit between the commutator segments and that will greatly reduce the performance of the starter motor armature. So that can be cleaned by using a broken hacksaw blade like so or anything that is possible to clean in between, you can use. So if the undercut depth is less than the minimum, or if you feel that there is some dirt that needs to be cleaned, you can always use a hacksaw blade like so. Look for example right here, there is some dirt accumulated, it can be cleaned in such a fashion. By doing so, you can still 
ensure normal operation of the starter motor armature. So dear viewers, this is all we have for you in this video regarding some of the inspections and service operations to be done on the starter motor armature. There are also other tests that can be performed. For example, you can use a growler tester to check for a short circuit. You can also use a multimeter in order to do the same. In today's video, we have looked at some of the tests that can be performed by using an ohmmeter and some of the physical inspections that have to be done on a starter motor armature. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.